All right, we've been looking forward to this. An exciting update today, breaking new ground in weather forecasting. NOAA's Global Systems Laboratory unveils HRRR CAS, the first AI-powered regional forecast system. Uh, this innovative tool, part of Project Eagle, it's an initiative that promises to revolutionize how we predict short-term weather and track environmental changes. This new experimental model is what NOAA describes as the AI-powered sibling to the HRRR, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. We call it the HER, and we use it in conjunction with our in-house Fox Weather model to forecast every single day here at Fox Weather. So for more on this, let's bring in uh, the project lead for HERCAST, Dr. Isadora Junkoff. Uh, Dr. Junkoff, first of all, uh, thank you uh, for being here with us, and congrats on the rollout of this. It feels like a big step forward, right? I mean, I, I would argue that the HER, that's one of the most important tools in weather forecasting. This has the potential to take things up to the next level. So can you explain what exactly this is and, and why it's such a breakthrough for weather forecasting? Well, first, Ian, thanks, thanks for having me. This is, this is great, and this is extremely exciting for, for NOAA and for Global Systems Laboratory. So as you did great introduction for HER, HER has been or was developed here at the Global Systems Laboratory, and it has been operational now for 10 years. And at the same time, here at the lab, we have a team of computational scientists that work closely with physical scientists evaluating emerging technologies and how we use them to improve our science. Well, AI is one of the emerging technologies and being the original developers of HER, it made sense to create data-driven HER, which is HERCAST. So uh, this is the first time that NOAA is using an AI-powered system for regional forecasting. Some of the new AI, the tropical models last year, they had an excellent season. So what exactly is this being trained off of and how optimistic are you about its performance, at least out of the gate? So it was trained on her data to be more specific on her analysis data. And we used three years of her analysis for to training. And uh, I have to say, we are at our early stage. We are very encouraged with our preliminary results. We also already identified a couple of areas for improvement. But I personally am very optimistic. And one of the big things here is speed, right? We understand that the HERCAST can deliver extremely fast forecasts, physics-based, the, the more old-school numerical weather prediction. That's slow, it's costly, and you could call it uh, computationally needy. This new model, it doesn't need a supercomputer. It doesn't take hours and hours to run. So, so how fast are we talking about here? How big of a deal could that be uh, moving forward for, for short-term weather forecasting? So you are, you are correct. I mean, her being very high resolution and covering the full conus is computationally intensive model to run and it requires a lot of resources. Her cast, as all other data-driven models, is much more efficient. It's once it's trained, it's easy and uh, fast and computationally inexpensive to execute. However, I have to point out it does take resources. Uh, both computational and data resources to train these models, and that can be somewhat long, uh, uh, long time training. Uh, they are executed fast, which which means that it will allow us to expand our ensemble forecasting, which means our uh, estimation of uncertainty associated with forecast will hopefully be better, and that will be the key, especially for the high impact weather. Yeah, yeah, ensemble forecasts typically represent the, the best forecast. So how quickly can these be run? How long would uh, a sample model run take to complete? So we just actually did estimates the other day, and we, we plan to run 11 ensemble members that we can fit four ensemble members on one GPU, and it would take to produce 48-hour forecast in seven minutes. Wow based on our estimates. Yeah, that's, that's a big deal right there. So is, is there a path forward here? Let's say this, this rolls out. Uh, you have excellent accuracy. You said you're optimistic about it. I, I understand it has to be trained off of the traditional numerical uh, weather models. But is there a path forward here where, where they replace them all together? Or do you see these working uh, side by side for a while? 
Well, in my personal opinion, I, I definitely see them working side by side. Traditional models, physical models are the key tool for us to understand physical processes, get to the scales that we haven't explored before, simulate these processes and eventually forecast them, which will then uh, produce data set that we can train AI models to produce solutions faster. So absolutely they need to work hand in hand. Yeah, well, th this is pretty amazing to consider. Uh, thinking back to when the original HER was released and we were all blown away by this next evolution of weather forecasting. This feels like we're uh, kind of on the doorstep of another. So uh, a job well done, really exciting technology, and we're, uh, we're looking forward to actually using this and, and seeing how it works moving forward. That's the project lead of HERCAST, Dr. Isadora Jenkoff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet.